Hey there YouTube friends, Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it and welcome back to Planet Zoo. If there's a Planet Zoo video, it must mean there's a new update. And indeed, there is. Planet Zoo has just released the Southeast Asia All Animal Pack. Eight animals, seven habitat animals, and one exhibit animal. And so I thought for this pack, uh, which was provided to me by Frontier, thank you so much, appreciate it as always. Uh, but I thought for this pack, it would be great to come into um, Emerald gardens. What I've done the last several DLCs is made one-off exhibits for each of the animals to kind of show them off, but what I'm going to do with this one is uh, because it's this larger pack that all seem to go together quite well, uh, we're going to add them into Emerald Gardens here. If you're just finding me because of this pack, Emerald Gardens is the zoo I started Oh, when Planet Zoo came out. You'll see that this zoo uh, has uh, gotten kind of large. It's fairly realistic. Um, I think the last thing we added to the zoo was the Australia house back over here. The problem being that I accidentally deleted the most recent save, so some of the final details in the Australia house have gone missing, which is a big, big motivation killer. <laughs> anyway, um, quick overview here uh, is the entrance area, and then you have this area as all North American animals. We have timber wolves, uh, doll sheep. We have uh, 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 pronghorn and buffalo, and then back here we have reindeer. This was created by our friend Ruby. And then on this side we have uh, Asian elephants, heavily inspired by the Houston Zoo elephant habitat. And then we have here the Australia house. So we've butted up against the edge of the zoo on this side, but we still have a ton of room over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down in this view here and zoopity doop oh we're gonna come in and we're gonna head this way and we're going to build and kind of extend pretty much to the borders over here because this lake is not really going to be part of the zoo it's supposed to be part of a bigger park area but um we're going to expand this way and we're going to try to create a southeast asia area that contains all of the animals in the new pack i'm gonna tell you right now it's going to be more than one episode worth i uh, will get about three i think done for this episode and then probably the rest will be in the next episode maybe even stretch it out to three total to cover this pack we'll see what happens but uh let's do like we do where i I bring you back in once I've got some work done and I'll talk to you through the process and the choices that I've made. So let's see what this new pack has to offer. So first things first, I wanted to get an idea. I had to have an idea of what I wanted to do for the area. The thing that I wanted to do for this particular area is to make it a walkthrough exhibit, potentially with another walkthrough offshoot area. If we look at the rest of the zoo, we don't have any like specific zone you know what I mean where like you walk through the area I'm thinking like a tropic world of Brookfield Zoo or like in the uh, the Africa exhibit in the Houston Zoo or the brand new South American Zoo where there's a defined entrance and an exit and you walk through and it tells the story of a land I don't know if we're gonna be telling many stories but I thought it would be nice to house all of our new Southeast Asian animals uh, along this wood path here. <clears throat> so the difference in the path delineates that it's a special exhibit. And then it was all about how are we going to squeeze, how and what are we going to squeeze in here. So I went ahead, first thing I went was not a throwaway animal, but one of those that like, you're not here to see these. <laughs> these are the, uh, what are, these are the bar of uh, bab Babarusas. I'm probably saying these wrong. These are actually at the Houston Zoo, my local zoo. And, um, they are along. They are by the. Uh, um, they are by the orangutans, which makes sense. Both Southeast Asian animals. So yeah, I threw these in. I didn't want them to have a super huge pen. And you're gonna notice that, like, scale-wise, uh, a lot of these animals, if we were going by game stats, they would not be too happy. Uh, I'm okay with that. You'll notice that it's a little under their requirement for land, but I tend to find that the requirement, uh, the space requirement in Planet Zoo, is a little. Uh, overzealous so <laughs> but you can see here it's on a slope and a pretty steep slope at that but that's one of the things about this zoo that I'm always having to deal with are the terrain shifts that I've given myself and I don't mind it I do think it's a little tough to see 
to see them in here, but I do love the simplicity of this and the very bare bones. I mean, it is just chain link fence that leads to the backstage. And yeah, we put some reeds in to try and hide this backstage, but you, you, can, you can totally see it. Uh, we have a little cover here, which is in, like an indoor shed for them. Uh, really simple, really basic, but I'd, it's, 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 I did not want to spend like, I, and an animal like this, I, I, there's other animals in this pack that I really want to take time to show off and things like that. So uh, this came together surprisingly quick, which is like we didn't have any updates. One of the things that's interesting about this pack is that there are no new scenery pieces, which as a scenery focused player like myself is kind of a bummer, but uh, using some of the Australia pieces here for the, for the building kind of gives it that aged look, which I kind of like a lot. So it'll be interesting to see how the, um, to see how the foliage and all the pieces we already have coexist with these new animals. I mean, we have Asian, but it's very much like East Asian. It's a different vibe um, as far as architecture pieces go. So it'll be interesting to see what we do. I'm probably just gonna end up being far more naturalistic. So uh, this is gonna be interesting. I think we're gonna put the dolls here, those, those dogs, we're gonna put those here um, and this narrow strip of land i actually you'll see i i cape carved out the backstage path I, I plan to have some backstage probably circling this entire exhibit um so that there's easy access and we'll probably build uh, some keeper hut or something over here somewhere because otherwise the closest one is like way over here and that's ridiculous so we'll need to have a couple in here for this specific exhibit uh, but yeah that's kind of the beginnings of what i'm thinking a little lost what's going to go in the center here had some ideas like i was thinking maybe tape here so we can have on the hill here i don't know uh we'll we'll, we'll figure it out <laughs> so the dolls are in and they are adorbs i mean come on <laughs> uh, as always i know i always fawn over the pack but man the animals look and sound really really good i love it i'm gonna take a little nappy nap beautiful model uh, I don't know a lot about these dog, uh, about these dolls. I, I don't know much about them, um, but I, they're really pretty. I like the rusty red color. Um, they're, yeah, I like that they're kind of taller looking than some of the others uh, dog species that are in the canine canid species that are in the game. Super cool. Um, let's take a look at what we got going on for their habitat here. Terrain is too small for them. I think this this looks f completely reasonable f it, to have in a zoo. Um, again, I am not. That's huge. Fifteen hundred square meters is really really big. And apologies if you can hear the dog barking um, outside my window. <laughs> Perfect timing, huh? So anyway, um, yeah, I'm liking the way this is set up. I wanted to put one of the main enrichment items up close uh, to where the people will be able to watch them play in the pool. And I had to dress it up a little bit because I really don't like this wooden edge here around it. I, I'm not a fan of that. So uh, these guys, these guys, they kind of seem to be able to exist anywhere. <laughs> like their, their biome is everything basically except for tundra um, and desert. But yeah, they can taiga, grassland, tropical, temperate, they can do it all. Oh my gosh, he jumped over the log. That was really cool. But yeah, I'm really trying to do some cool things here, like these little scenes here with fallen logs and stuff, rather than just big open spaces. I know that technically that cuts down on the amount of traversable area, but in, in reality, the dogs would be, you know, the dolls would be climbing all over it. I uh, forgot to put a tray in, that's why the food is just dumped right on the right on the ground but hopefully you're getting a better idea of what we're going for here the water is in um i do want to do some better borders here i'm going to try to use some rock work to make it i'm going to try and do like this kind of rock work all the way around the edge to make it look a bit more artificial in nature because i don't anticipate them actually swimming in this pool very much so I don't think it will be too much of an issue to do that. Uh, usually if I want the animals to use the water, I'll try to be really shallow with the grade. And you'll notice the, it's pretty steep. So I'm, I'm all right rocking, rocking it off. We'll say. <laughs> that sounds weird and mildly inappropriate. 
Um, but anyway, loving the new doles. Doles, right? They are, that's what they are called, right? Yeah, doles. I think that's what they're called. I am loving them. They are very, very cool. There is one thing I do want to share. Um, there's a new enrichment item, and it's this tree. This tree is a scratching tree, and a lot of the animals in the pack, <clears throat> they use it. They go and they rub up on it, which is super duper cool. It's not one of the things that the dolls want, but yeah, I, I really like it. So we're going to try and do a lot with the uh, foliage here to try and block some of our views. We don't really, as we're standing here, I don't really want you to too easily be able to see across and see other people on that side of the habitat. I'd rather it be a little more um, secluded, or at least feel like it is. So those are some things that are in my mind. We have to dress up this area, make it look nice. Uh, and I think this is going to be a good place to put some staff, uh, some staff buildings. We're having trouble keeping our, um, <clears throat> what's 15? Uh, oh, the pigs. Lovely. We're having trouble keeping our elephants clean. That's been a problem since I put them in. There's like seven or eight in here, and I have like three keepers on it. But there's not much that they can, there's, they can't keep up with all the elephant poop. And like I said, since we don't have anything back here for keepers, they have to run halfway across the zoo and come back, and it's just a hot mess. So we're going to fix that up here. Once the dole exhibit is finished, there will be a place for keepers to quickly access things, or at least quicker. So yeah, let's keep plugging away. We've got some more work to do. It's still pretty rough around the edges. So now we have most of the doll exhibit completed, at least the front of the house. We still have some work to do dressing the keeper hut up. We'll, we'll incorporate it into this to make this look like one big area, probably a night house type thing as well. Uh, but yeah, this is the mostly finished result. Uh, a couple tweaks here and there, but you'll see what I mentioned with the rocks here to kind of make it look like an artificial pond, artificial lake. I'm really happy with how this fence turned out. Uh, this is just a wall piece, a couple wall pieces and a couple of pillars or columns. That's it. And just copied and pasted it around. And I'm really, really pleased with that as I hear somebody splashing in the pool. Oh, he's taking a swim. They do go in it. Swimming right through the lily pads. How about that? <laughs> oh, are they on the, li they're dancing on the lily pads. Look at that. I didn't know they could do that. Uh oh. You get out. Come on. Go. There you go. There you wow. <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> you did all that when you had a pool right here. Anyway, ugh, I'm really pleased with how this wall came out with the pot. I love this vibe. Um, put some rock work in here again to try and, and close off the view just a little bit. Like, yeah, if you're looking for it, you can still see. But now it feels a lot more like, oh, I get this view here. And I want it to feel like you're coming to them like in their natural habitat kind of thing, which is why there's all this space here. There's going to be a bunch of space in between so that we can really dress it up and really make it feel like you're walking through um, a nature, you know, walking through nature rather than the middle of a zoo somewhere. But at the same time, all that being said, I do like that you'll still be able to see some of the keeper house poking above because no matter how much you try, you can never fully, uh, you can never fully realize that illusion. You will inevitably, at least the zoos I go to, you will inevitably break the illusion no matter how good of a job you do especially if you know where to look <laughs> so having that i think is is really good uh lots of clutter lots of ground clutter to kind of dress up the area again really pleased uh, i think it looks pretty good whole bunch of bamboo in the back to kind of make it look more foresty uh yeah i'm i think this this has turned out really really well um and now we move on. We're going to do one more animal in this episode. We are going to start transitioning into a forest scene. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add another path that's going to cut in the center here. And we're going to have a, a clouded leopard be in here. And I think we're going to do also the binturong in its own little area. Or maybe we'll have some cohabitation. I, I'd like the idea of mixing some of the animals because um, that's a more modern idea in zoos and this would potentially since i'm building it now should be a more modern addition to the zoo so if there's a way for us to incorporate a bunch of animals that might be pretty cool but clouded leopard i think is going to be by itself it's a predatory animal i can't imagine that it would go well with other animals <laughs> 
else. But yeah, so we're gonna start that. We're gonna raise the path just a little bit and change the texture. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see all of that. Now, I do know that um, I got on a bit of a roll, so get ready for a, uh, a rather large change. <laughs> like like I said, big change. Uh, we'll get to all this in, in, in a hot second, but I want to go ahead and show you. Uh, there's still some, I forgot to add the like seam, the top of the roof line here, but you can see now we've incorporated this into its own building. Um, and I, it's, it's, you know, it's a backstage building. It's not meant to look nice, <laughs> but skylights seem to be a standard thing, but there you go, that's in there now. Um, I had to extend the path. I had to extend the shoreline of the lake a little bit because we're going to bring the path around and continue it uh, behind the doles. But you'll see here. Here is our forest trail, is what we're going to call this, I think. And I think right next door over here, we'll put another. Maybe we'll put the binturong, or if we can handle it, we'll find a way to incorporate multiple animals into maybe this area here. That'd be pretty cool. Um, because a lot of the other animals in the pack are specifically forest animals, so it'd be nice to include them. Uh, I'm going to do a lot more rock work here to make this feel like it's more mountainous. I mean, it is built on a hill, but this looks pretty stark. I have to do a better job at the moment of hiding this um, this habitat. And I know that it, it's, it's not finished, obviously. It's still got a lot of work to do. This is all pretty raw. I just wanted to get the habitat itself finished for our clouded leopard, another animal in the Southeast Asia pack. So let us take a gander. Here's our archer for scale. <laughs> but we are going to really go heavy on the bamboo here. Um, Remember, this zoo is inspired by the zoos in the Pacific Northwest, the zoo in Oregon, and the zoo near Seattle. I think it's Seattle. Um, anyway, but there's lots of bamboo and stuff, uh, lots of foliage in those zoos that are, it's just overgrowth, and it looks really cool, and that's kind of the uh, aesthetic I kind of want to have here. This actually, probably now that I'm looking at it, doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the vibe. So we're gonna get rid of it. We'll put something else in here. But anyway, I uh, built a snow leopard habitat. Not snow leopard, clouded leopard. Those are different animals. And I love it. I love how cramped it is. I'm gonna get rid of Mr. Archer too. Mr. Archer is there for scale. I really enjoy how you can't even see if the animal is in here anywhere. Where is it? It likes to sleep on a rock. It's probably sleeping on a rock, actually. But we'll go in there in a second. But this, I wanted to capture a forest climbing animal atmosphere and just overgrowth, so that the animal, so that the the leopard could hide if it wanted to. That's really the what I was going for. And I don't mind being able to see this rock uh, or this concrete wall here. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll probably cover it with via something. I don't know. The hard part is this animal is such a good climber, and I've probably made this too easily escapable in real life. But for the game, it's fine. It doesn't. It's not able to escape. So let's take a closer look inside. Get on the other side of it. Oh, there it is. It's on one of the logs. Is it sleeping? No, it's just hanging out. Is it stuck? Look at it. It's so pretty. <laughs> I think that's. A, I think that's a screenshot. Uh, but anyway, the noise these guys make is so cool. I really enjoy the... <laughs> it's like, that's my clouded leopard impression. I think it's spot on. You'll hear. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear. Uh, is he stuck? Uh, he does have some problems traversing the area because there's so much plant going on. So if, you, if I show you, don't be angry. Uh, oh yeah, he's stuck. See, he got stuck. He, he lost the ability to traverse. So let's move him and you'll see where he can and can't go. So I don't know why that happens. Sometimes he gets stuck and then he's not able to move. But this is all the range he can get to. Uh, I've yet to see him go in the hammock. There you go, you heard him. Yeah, as, as you can see, it's, it's having a hard time navigating around here, but that's okay. Uh, I'm not gonna change anything because I think it looks too nice to change it. And you can see now, when it does that, you can... You can get a nice view when it comes up onto that platform there. There are places where you can see it, but I want it to feel like it can go hide in in all the trees if it wants to. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's right. It can climb some of these trees that we have for it as well. So yeah, uh, it's a small habitat. It's too small, uh, according to the game. But a lot of these cats that climb, I've seen small floor space, like small 
a square footage on the ground, but then really tall, like lots of climbability. And that's kind of the vibe I went for here. It's not the biggest, uh, you know, it doesn't take up the most space, but it's tall. There's lots of places for it to climb. So that's what the plan is, to dress all this up, make it look better, uh, add some more animals. We've got lots more animals in this pack, but for a first uh, look, for my first episode, I think this is going to do it for me at this point. So I hope you're excited for the next uh, couple episodes here of Emerald Gardens to get some of these new animals in the pack. I'm, I'm excited for it as he comes walking across the log here. Oh, that's so nice. Look at that. Oh, so good. Except he's kind of floating on a log, but whatever. Come on now, tell me that's not great. I think that's awesome. Anyway, we're going to leave it right here. That's just going to do it for me. So if you did enjoy, please do hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, with all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever. And I will see all of you for the next episode of Planet Zoo. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.